Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our service this morning. Um, just want to remind you that because we can't have a formal Eucharist this morning, um, if you've got some bread, wine, or a soft drink, or even a jelly baby, um, we're going to remember Jesus at the Last Supper during the service. Today's also special because we're remembering that it would have been a confirmation service this afternoon. Um, and I'm hoping that you can see the same uh, slide as I can and think about our candidates of Catherine, Debbie, Megan, Anne-Marie and Chris, who would have been received into the Church of England. So uh, there's a special message from the Bishop this morning. So um, he's thinking of us as well. And it's very moving that he's thinking of us and the candidates because he couldn't be with us today. So welcome to our service. Well, good morning to all of you in Shepshed and indeed those from the surrounding villages who have joined for this morning's church service. Uh, my name is Martin, I am the Bishop of Leicester and I'm bringing you very special greetings this morning because I was due to be with you this Sunday for a confirmation service. Sadly, of course, I can't do that and we're going to have to delay that confirmation service. Uh, I sincerely hope at some point in the future I will be able to come. I'll be able to meet the confirmation candidates and pray with you on that very special moment. But for now, I'm bringing greetings during this Easter season as together we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. I hope that you will know something of the joy and indeed the peace that Jesus came to bring, uh, even in the midst of the difficult circumstances in which we're all finding ourselves at the moment. God is with us. God's peace comes to us, whatever our circumstances. So thank you for all that you're doing to look after one another, to serve God and serve God's church at this time. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, hallelujah. Rejoice, heavenly powers. Sing, choirs of angels. Exult, all creation around God's throne. Jesus Christ, our King, is risen. Rejoice, O earth, in shining splendor, radiant in brightness of your King. Darkness vanishes forever. Rejoice, O Mother Church, exulting glory. The risen Saviour shine upon you. Let this place resound with joy, echoing the mighty song of all God's people. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing for all. Though we have grieved him, yet he will heal us if we confess our sins that separate us from God and neighbour. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, 
through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us and pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness, that we may always serve you in pureness of living and truth, through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
So I'm going to read to you from Acts and chapter 2. Uh, first of all, beginning at the 14th verse and then going straight to verse 36. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible if you want to follow along. Acts chapter 2 verse 14. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made this Jesus both Lord and Messiah, yes, he whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who were far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptised, and that day about 3,000 persons were added to their number. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I am the first and the last, says the Lord, and the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Hallelujah. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Now, on the same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and, and talking with each other about all the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how the chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all of this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some of the women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that he had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that Jesus was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? 
Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he was going on. But they urged him strongly saying, stay with us because it's almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When Jesus was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem and then found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Creator, Redeemer and Sustainer. Amen. In recent times, we've seen the worst in people and the best in people. I don't know about you, but on Thursday nights, I join along with so many other people on the clap along uh, at eight o'clock to support our frontline workers and our NHS. I stand outside with my pot and my spoon and I make as much noise as I can. And every now and again, I stop to listen because I can't see my neighbours, only my immediate neighbours. So when I stop, I can hear the most joyful sound, clapping, banging of pots and pans, shouting, different noises, but all in joyful support of our NHS workers and our frontline workers. For those who are putting their lives on their line, and for those who are willing and have sacrificed their lives for us. And when I listen to all that sound, when I stand outside with my, my pot and my spoon, I can't help thinking about my son who work, works in a hospital in Warsaw. I think of my son-in-law who is a delivery driver. I think of all those people around us in shops, in factories, in different places, in the NHS, the frontline workers, the care homes, and all those many places where people are continuing to work to support our country. We're putting their lives on the line to keep us safe. And I feel moved. I feel joyful because we're all united and we're showing our courage. But I also feel moved and a slight tinge of sadness when I think about those who've lost their lives. These are challenging times. The story today is the story of two disciples who are rushing from, in, from Jerusalem to Emmaus. And they certainly are feeling challenging times. This takes place after Jesus has been arrested, tortured, crucified, abandoned by his disciples who huddle in the upper room, scared. And yet the third day has reached them. The resurrection has happened. The women come back and report to the disciples that they've seen the risen Lord. But these two disciples, for whatever reason, do not feel that they can stay. They feel in fear of their lives. They think they may be the next one to die on the cross, just as their Lord and friend died on the cross. Perhaps it's too much for them. We don't know. 
We're not told their motivation, only that they're rushing away from Jerusalem towards Emmaus. They meet a stranger on the road. The stranger asks them, what's going on? They're a bit amazed, wondering where he's been all this time. Don't you know what's going on, what's happened in Jerusalem about Jesus of Nazareth? So they tell him about Jesus. They even tell him about the resurrection. And yet there seems to be a lack of belief in all of that. Maybe because they haven't seen him themselves. And so they tell him what's happened. And then Jesus, who they do not recognise and see only as a stranger, begins to explain to them scriptures. He talks back into the Old Testament about the prediction of the Messiah to come and what is to happen and how he will rise again on the third day. Notice that at no time does he condemn them because they've abandoned him when he was on the cross. At no time does he judge them because they're running away from Jerusalem, even though he's risen from the dead. Instead, there is encouragement, compassion. And so he talks to them about scripture. And then as they get to the near the end of the day, it seems that this stranger is going to walk on while the disciples stop. So they ask him, stop with us and eat. So he stops with them. And as they sit at the table together, the stranger breaks bread. And they realise he is the risen Lord. And he disappears. Their hearts are on fire. So they return to Jerusalem. There is still fret there. They could still die on the cross. They could still be arrested. They could still be rejected. But instead, they still return. Their hearts on fire with the love of Christ willing to face whatever challenge in front of them because they know the risen Lord is walking with them even if he is unseen. So where is God in all of this? I have been very amazed and encouraged and proud that what I have seen as a witness of our church in this place and throughout many other places in this country and throughout the world. The witness of goodness coming out of adversity. And I can't help but see our Lord's hand within that. He might not have caused this pandemic, but he seems to be able to bring out the best in us and not just the worst. I've witnessed in this time so many people doing things out of compassion and love that it's been really encouraging. And amongst our own church family, I've seen a strong witness to their faith. People have built Easter gardens and put them outside their doors. They've put posters and pictures in their windows. Some of them have painted the most amazing murals on their windows. They've decorated the railings outside St. Botoff's church. This is all a witness to the resurrection, the light in darkness. And I'm so proud of you. You've written to each other. You supported one another. You sent cards, emails, texts. And this is what it's all about. It's facing the challenge with faith. A question I would ask. The witness that you've shown is very obvious. The windows painted, posters, the decorations, the gardens, the public proclamation of our faith. The question I would ask, would you have done all this if we hadn't been in this situation? Or would you have done it in a more toned down way? Perhaps we're stepping up to this challenge, showing our faith. Where is God in all of this? That's what I started with the question. Where is God in all of this? Through the resurrection, 
we know that God is with us, unseen but still there. Just like my neighbours in Shepshed, when I stand outside on a Thursday night, I can't see them, but I know they're there. I know their presence is there. I can hear them. In the same way that I know God's presence is with us now. We can't see him. We might not hear him. But we can see him at work in our world around us and in our community. The risen Lord, through his Holy Spirit, is with us now. He's in our homes and in our streets, amongst our neighbours and in our world. He's with the suffering and the dying, with those who've passed from this world to the next. And he's with, he's with us, the living, those who are ill and challenged. But he's here. He will bring light out of this darkness. This is our faith. Where is God in all of this? He's right in the middle of all of this. He's alongside you and he's alongside me. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. The response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray for the life and mission of the church throughout the world. We pray for all bishops, priests and deacons, the benefits of St. Botolph's, Shepshed and St. James the Greater, Oaks in Charnwood. Let us also pray for Reverend Lydia, Reverend John, Aidy, Diane, and all those who are working in our benefits to enable our online services to continue during the coronavirus pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for Elizabeth, our Queen, and all who accept responsibility for leadership and decision-making in the affairs of the world and this country. May those who represent us in government be people of integrity, who keep their promises and lead us in the ways of justice and compassion. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for all NHS frontline staff who continually place their lives at risk as they care for the sick, who are being struck down by the coronavirus. Let us also pray for the police, military, council workers, couriers, supermarket staff, and so many others who are now continuing to work whilst many of us are isolating to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Let us also pray for the Samaritans, who offer a lifeline to those people who are in the depths of despair. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the sick and those who suffer, for all who are in nursing homes and hospices within our own benefits and the county of Leicestershire. Let us continue to pray for those who are housebound, we must also remember all who are sick, amongst them Brian and Christine Hall, David Whittington, Deborah Benson, John Bradshaw, Kevin Burt, Janet MacDonald, Roy Smith and Terry. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them to the joy of your salvation. God, our Father, we remember in your presence those who have died in the faith of Christ. Brian Mee, Fred Farmer, Tom Haycock. We give you thanks for the memory of their words and deeds and for all that they accomplished in their lifetime. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. 
Let us also pray for the many thousands of people who have died in Great Britain and throughout the world due to the coronavirus pandemic. We pray for them and offer comfort to the loved ones who mourn their passing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, look with favour on these prayers of your faithful. Renew and enlighten us by your heavenly grace. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have managed to have some bread, a soft drink or some wine or even a jelly baby near you, um, we're going to remember the Last Supper. I want to celebrate. To... <laughs> That's all right, Simon. You can put the next slide on. <laughs> our Lord sat at table with his family and friends and disciples to celebrate the great feast of Passover. But as this celebration progressed, Jesus changed the words and transformed them, transformed this celebration into his legacy. We celebrate this today. So we remember. Jesus is here with us now in our homes, in our streets and in our world. His spirit is with us. As our Lord sat with his friends and disciples, he wanted to leave behind a living memorial of his presence on earth and his continued presence through his Holy Spirit. He transformed the service of Passover and the everyday elements of bread and wine and invited them and us to, to make Christ part of the fabric of everyday life. Jesus took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take it, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the celebration had ended, after much singing, laughter, and a little concern over Jesus's words about leaving them, Jesus took the cup of celebration and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. In remembrance of me. With these words, Jesus, our Lord and Saviour, invites us to make him part of our everyday life. Today we celebrate Christ died, Christ is risen and Christ will come again. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. glory of the risen Lord 
Before I give the blessing, I'm sure there's a few celebrations out there, some we know about and some we don't. Um, so I'm wishing you a happy birthday, Mary Haywood, who did the prayers, and also for Den and for Pam. I hope she's watching as well, and Sue Burt. So happy birthday, all of you. So I hope you find a way of having a joyful celebration at this time, but we're thinking of you. May Christ do out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And that may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. God has blessed us through the resurrection of Jesus Christ and called us to be his disciples. We share that blessing with our neighbourhood, driving the pairs of darkness from before us and bringing with us the light of Christ. Go in the peace of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs>